Today is Sunday, August, no, it's Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, August 25th, I believe. Um, and tomorrow is the first day of my second semester of occupational therapy school. So, life update, I moved across the country to go to graduate school to become an occupational therapist. And for those of you who don't know, an occupational therapist is someone who uses occupations, which is kind of our term for any meaningful activity you do throughout the day. And so we use those occupations to help people build independence, um, gain strength, gain skills, um, and overall just increase their wellness which is like a very tiny fraction of what we do. Occupational therapy is very broad and I'm very excited to keep learning about it. So the Chickadee Knitting Club is over. Um, maybe it's on hiatus, but I don't really have the time with my school schedule to keep up with the knitting tutorials. And also, as you can see, I'm in a very different location than I was in my little, I call it my little chickadee knitting cottage, cottage chickadee knitting cottage um, or my little studio that I had set up and so I decided since things are so new and I'm in a new stage and journey of my life to start a new little series. I've always wanted to do what's called a knitting podcast um, where I just film videos of me um, sharing what's on my mind and sharing what's on my needles what I've been working on. Typically in knitting podcasts, if you're unfamiliar with them, there are two parts to each video. I don't know if there's a particular order that they go in, so I'm just going to play it by ear and do what I feel like doing. Um, but they are WIPs or WIPs, I think some people call them. Um, I certainly do. Which stands for Works in Progress. So those are the projects that I'm currently working on, so works in progress, makes kind of sense. And the others are finished objects, which sounds super fancy and just means the projects we've finished or that I finished. And so first I want to share with you some of the finished objects that I've recently gotten done. Um, I've just been obsessed with this one green yarn and I'll have to double check what it is. Um, Another part of Knitting Podcast is always sharing the patterns and yarns that we're using so that anyone who's watching who's interested can try them out for themselves. Um, so I'll do some digging for you and put that in there. But this green yarn, it doesn't look very appealing or interesting on the camera here, but I assure you it is this gorgeous sage. It's very soft. Um, and I've made a few lily pad drink coasters with it. And so I haven't exactly knit these. This is crochet. I do a little bit of crocheting, but not nearly as much as knitting. Um, but I've crocheted these little guys and a little bunting banner for my sister for her new apartment. And then also a little bag receptacle to stick all the plastic trash bags that um, me and my roommate use. And so it's a little lumpy with all the bags stuffed in there, but it works pretty great. It has a little hole in the bottom, falls out. And so I'll be sharing those patterns with you guys in case you are interested. And currently I am working on two different projects, kind of going back and forth. So when I get bored with one, I hop right onto the other. Um, this first one, here, let me grab it. I won't be able to share the name of the yarn with you because I just got a sweater from the thrift store and unraveled it um, and recycled the yarn that way. So that is a really cheap and easy way to get fantastic quality yarn um, when you're on a budget. Uh, and also it was a really old, like ugly sweater. I don't think anyone um, mourns its loss. So it's going to make a fantastic scarf. I'm working on this scarf. Um, usually around the fall and winter time, I like to just make simple scarves, um, garter stitch, just the knit stitch over and over and over and over again. Um, so that I can make, you know, a nice enough scarf and then tie it around a tree. Um, so someone in the winter who is in need of some extra warm clothing, especially because I live very far north in the United States right now, um, 
just give them some extra warmth if they need it. And especially in the town that I'm going to college in right now, um, there is a pretty large population of people experiencing homelessness. So I like to do my part um, to help individuals by making little scarves that I can tie around trees. And then also to help advocate for people experiencing homelessness in my city um, and seeing uh, what sort of progress we can make that way. This yarn is a very dark blue. It's very pretty. Um, but there are little pieces of um, sort of yarn just hanging off of that. And that is intentional. The sweater that I unraveled, um, I thought, I expected it to just, you know, come in one big pull. That was not the case with this one. Um, it sort of, I guess, was knit in segments. And so every now and then the yarn just ends. So when I'm knitting, I just let um, the end peek off of the sweater. It kind of makes it look cool and fluffy. Um, and then about like six or seven stitches before the yarn ends, I add the next yarn in and knit with two yarns at the same time so that it sort of like anchors it in so it's not going to unravel anymore. I hope. Um, I can only hope. Uh, but that is something simple, um, sort of mindless that I can do. Um, and it's a really fantastic project for beginners because not only is it just the easiest stitch over and over and over, as I've said, um, but by making a scarf, all you need is a single skein of yarn, however you get it, whether from recycling a sweater or just buying it at the store. Um, and then also just a really way to give back to the community and help people in a real way and use uh, the gift of knitting, use what you've learned um, to help others. And so I think that's a really great lesson, not only in the realm of knitting and building your knitting skills, um, but also just in life and learning to be generous and learning to think of others and to help others. So that is a fantastic project for you if you are interested in that. My other um, WIP, work in progress, I'm currently working on. I haven't gotten very far, um, but I do a lot of knitting of gifts for other people. As you can tell, I'm making this scarf for a stranger. I, um, knit or crocheted these coasters and the bunting banner, um, for my sister, and hopefully I'll stock up a few more to give out as gifts to friends. Um, but it's not often that I knit things for myself. And I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe it's just because I just prefer knitting for other people or because if I knit everything for myself, I would just have a closet crammed with scarves and hats and socks. And so if I'm going to knit something for myself, I want it to be very intentional. Um, and so I have this yarn. I actually have the wrapper still on it, so I can tell you. It is the Wool-like Similane. That's how you say it. Um, in the color rose, I got this at Michael's. Um, and again, you can't exactly see the color all that great, but is it? It's very lovely. It's very subtle. Um, it's sort of shiny, but it has just a soft, pinky kind of glow, um, and it feels really soft too. Like this is a squishable yarn. Let me tell you. So I love that, and I am working on a lace shawl wrap. Basically it's just going to be a massive rectangle that I can just wrap around my shoulders. Um, that'll be light and soft um, and yet warm and cozy at the same time. So hopefully y'all can get that done before the snow melts um, whenever that happens. Uh, this is my first time uh, living in this region um, and so I'm used to having a fairly consistent cycle of the seasons. So about every three months the seasons change. Um, so it's a brand new adventure. We'll see when the snow melts, but hopefully I'll get this done before then. It is a um, lace stitch pattern from Pearl Soho. Love Pearl Soho so much. I signed up for their emails and it's probably the one email newsletter that I actually get excited about seeing in my inbox. Um, they have patterns that you can purchase, they have yarns that you can purchase, but they also have a lot of 
free patterns too. Um, and just there's a lot of inspiration just scrolling through the yarns or scrolling through the patterns. And so I got an email for this particular floral stitch lace pattern. Um, again, I'll put that in the description so you can check it out too. And it was just so inspiring that I decided that, you know what, I'd like to make that for me. That looks really fun. And so far it is a ton of fun. I've done lace stitches before and so this one is pretty easy for me, but if you are like a brand new beginner, I would not recommend this as your very first lace stitch pattern. Um, but I'll hold this up a little closer so maybe you can see just the sort of ridges um, and little bits of holes peeking through there. And the way that the pattern goes, it's a little infuriating, I must say. Um, you do a few repetitions of just this same sort of stripey, as you can see the little stripes there, pattern. Um, and then once you've gotten used to it, once you've gotten comfortable with it, you do the same number of rounds, but the stitch pattern is flipped. And so everything you thought you knew, you're doing it backwards. Um, and so I just started that segment of the pattern, and I am very much dependent on the pattern, just reading every little instruction. Um, we have about an inch of each section of the pattern going back and forth, and in the end, it creates this lovely floral, um, soft and wavy sort of design. And so hopefully I'll have this as a finished object to show you in a vlog podcast in the future. But for now, um, it's just baby. It's a baby scarf right now. It's a baby. Um, taking good care of it, loving it, cherishing it, um, and having a really fun time knitting with it. And so that's all I have to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching all of this. Um, I hope it was as much fun to watch and calming to watch as it was for me. This was very cathartic. Um, and I like showing off what I've been working on. This is really fun. Let me know what you're working on. What are your works in progress? What are your current finished objects? Um, and hopefully I will have a new podcast up in the near future. I'm just going to be filming these as I feel like them. So no real consistency or schedule, but that's the way I like it. So take care and happy knitting. Thank you.